All right, well, now, young girls these days are being taught that they can study and become anything they want to be. But our next guest says what they should try to be is married. Wow. Mm. Susan Patton, <laughs> also known as the Princeton Mom, joins us on the couch to talk about her controversial views and her new book, Mary Smart, Advice for Finding the One. So thank you for joining us. Tell us how the book came about. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Let me correct what you just said. Okay. I'm not suggesting that all women need to be married or should want to be married. It's not for everybody. Marriage and motherhood is not for everybody. But what I am saying is if you're a smart girl and you know you do want marriage and motherhood as essential components of your life plan for happiness, you have to plan for that personal happiness with at least the same commitment and dedication that you're planning for your professional success. Why would, you, why would you not? Why would you leave anything as important as this to chance? I'm saying to young women, not all young women, some women don't want marriage, they don't want motherhood. That's fine. If you do want it, you have to plan for it. But don't you think that compromises the focus of what people go to school for? No, not at all. I think people go to school for many reasons. I'm certainly suggesting use your time on campus to your very best advantage get a world-class education meet your best friends involve yourself in every activity that's of interest to you play in the marching band write for the school paper get involved in as many activities as appropriate for you but also keep a very good eye out on your fellow classmates because this is the best concentration of men that you'll ever have to choose from in terms of their age appropriate they're single they're like-minded, and you have an opportunity to meet them in an organic way, over class or over a meal or walking on campus. Where are you going to meet men once you're graduated? Well, you say we lose a lot by not meeting and um, mating with people in an organic way because yeah. we rely too much on technology, and it's disjointed and disconnected. It's disjointed, disconnected. I, I really don't like online dating at all. I think it's undignified. I think it's fraught with hazards for young women. I think online dating sites are filled with married men who are trolling for women. I don't like anything about online dating. So I'm saying you do want to meet men in an appropriate manner, a safe manner, organically in a place where you're there for not just to meet a man, you're there to do many things which allows you to meet men in a comfortable way, get to know them in a way that it, it takes it slowly, it allows you to form opinions based on something other than just this meat market we're all here to, right. to made up. Let's rewind a second because sure. you wrote a letter to your alumni college newspaper. I did. And uh, you stated some of these opinions that you have right I now did. that you're telling us. And so did you think that it would spark such a reaction? Never in a million years. <laughs> Carolina, never in a million years did but I you think. You have to understand that a lot of people will take this as you encouraging young women to be gold diggers basically. Absolutely. Or to find, well, I mean, that's I'm kind not of suggest what... Gold digging? No, not gold digging. I'm suggesting that you use the opportunities you have while you're a student to your very best advantage. I'm not talking about money. I'm not talking about gold digging. I'm saying for many young women, especially well-educated women, I'm a well-educated woman. I I'm one of the first classes of women to graduate from Princeton. And I know how hard it is once you're no longer in a school environment to meet appropriate men and especially educated women have the extra problem of having almost priced themselves out of the market in terms of finding men who are not going to be threatened by them, who aren't going to be intimidated by their accomplishments and by their abilities, by their credentials. So I'm saying, and the reason I wrote this letter to the women on the campus of my alma mater is, I'm saying to these women, these are the guys. You'll meet, you'll meet great men once you graduate, but not nearly as many as these. <laughs> So be smart for yourself. Use this well, opportunity. I think, it, I think it makes sense. And I think if you look at it, it, it empowers women, too. Precisely. Because you're saying that women, when you talk about pricing yourself out of, you talk a lot about in the book, I don't know about a lot, about settling and how it, it, it seems like women are settling. In some cases, you have to. Women, and I talk to women all the time who say to me, well, I'm going to take the first 10 years out of college and really build my career. Then I'm going to think about finding a husband and starting a family. So here's the problem. 10 years after college, you're now in your mid-30s. You're going to now start looking for a husband. You're competing with women 10 years younger than you. This is not a competition that you're going to fare well in. But this is and actually what's happening. I mean, that's, exa is, that's exactly what's happening. are showing that that's what happens. And that's, that's what's happening. And that's so problematic for women who want 
families because if you start looking in your mid-30s, not only are you competing with women 10 years younger than you who you can't compete with on so many levels for the obvious reasons, but the men you're interested in, not only do they want a 10-year younger woman, but they want a woman who has 10 more years of fertility on her than you do because they're now ready to start a family. And in your mid-30s, you are already, many women are up against a biological clock that is running out quickly pounding let's talk about some of the advice that you <laughs> sure. give in the book because we want to go through some of those things sure. that you that you talk about so sure. um you say to beware of marrying a dumb guy hello <laughs> when you're this young though when you're this young how do you know that he's a dumb guy because you may be dumb as well okay well, if, Honestly, he's in, if he's in I, honors something in princeton john i am a holy I'm, I'm a different woman now than i was at 23 years right. old if i would have married the guy true. that i was with okay. at that point let me address I would be that he was enough. dumb that Let, guy he was, was an idiot. he was a bag of rocks <laughs> well one you totally know an idiot when you see one right, number right. one and so many women fall trap, fall victim to getting involved with a really cute, dumb guy thinking, oh, but he's so cute. The answer is, one, the sex is never going to get any better. And two, he's never going to get any smarter. Mm -hmm. So. Wow. <laughs> but you know what? So like that, and, and let me also address the issue of you're saying in your early 20s, you don't know who you're going to turn into by the time you get to your 30s. It's true, though. Of course it is. But I'm saying wait till you're 30 to get married. You don't know who you're going to turn into by the time you're 40. And when you're 40, you don't know who you're going to turn into when you're 50. You know, I want to so argue with you, but you have such great points. <laughs> <laughs> so you see, you see, so disturbing. Being well-educated and wanting marriage and motherhood are not mutually exclusive. That's exactly right. And this is such an important point. We have to remind young women, especially the educated young women who are being told, focus on your career, work harder because there's something incongruous about educated women wanting traditional roles of wife and mother? No. Mm -hmm. Nonsense. There's nothing incongruous about it, but if you want it, you have to plan for it. I wholeheartedly agree with you on your last two points that uh, casual sex can be physically and mentally damaging. Yes. And also, for I mean, women. That, for women, it absolutely can be. And there is never a convenient time to get married or have a baby. And that is the truth. It is the truth. I'm a human resources professional, and all the time I talk to women brilliant professional women they say to me oh I don't know that I want to get married now is there a bad time I can't have a baby now it's such an inconvenient can't go on a vacation now yeah. right it's like, the answer is there's never a convenient there's time, never a good time. to mean, get married yeah. have a baby go yeah. on vacation but this is the stuff that yeah. life is made of these are the things that you want most in your life so yeah you have to make time for this stuff well speaking of time uh, spend some time reading the book I know yes we're out of time Wow but it is a great book and I mean it really will cause a discussion if you if, you know if you so choose That's so absolutely <laughs> absolutely but Susan Patton thank you so much for coming to the couch we appreciate it what a Mary pleasure to Smart. be with you advice for finding the one is on bookshelves now pick it up today